This is a little bit more of the process of uh, getting hooked up to the Dallas machine. It's been a month since Sean Evans survived the worst of COVID. But after the virus ravaged his kidneys, his routine now includes three times a week dialysis, an outcome he says he never imagined. Oh, they came in and said that I had pneumonia in my left lung and the flu. What many first thought of as a respiratory disease now in question, with patients and doctors reporting a slew of puzzling symptoms. Patients with skin problems, they're calling it COVID toad, came this close to dying from kidney failure. About 31% of confirmed COVID infections presented with pink eye or other eye findings. The virus seeming to attack not just the lungs, but the gut, the heart, the kidneys, even the brain. What we're seeing is organ damage all over the place. People are dying of a disease that we do not understand. Thousands of people, old and young, and yes, there are young people dying. They are dying of a disease that does not make sense to us. Tonight, more than three months after the first reported COVID cases in the United States, we take you inside the medical world, where they're racing towards solutions in real time, seeking to unravel the mystery of the virus, which has taken so many lives. We're like uh, medical detectives, and you get uh, clues from all around the world. People say they're throwing spaghetti at the wall to see what sticks. It is true, and, and, and I think this is a situation that never happened in medicine in many, 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 many years. Last month, Sean Evans was planning a summer wedding, excited to walk down the aisle with his fiancée, Sarah. But the 40-year-old father of two says he knew something was wrong when he began experiencing the telltale signs of COVID. I would lay down and have these real bad coughing spells to where I couldn't hardly breathe. I lost my uh, sense of taste. I lost my sense of smell. My body ached. I understand you had an underlying um, condition before you tested positive. I have high blood pressure and diabetes. After a week of ignoring his symptoms, he finally went to the hospital, where he not only tested positive for coronavirus, he was shocked to learn his kidneys were failing. The one test that they did was supposed to be a 20, and mine was 200. So you basically uh, went off the charts. Yeah. yeah they told me if I'd have waited another day or so, I wouldn't be here now. Doctors put in an incision and started dialysis immediately. My heart just sunk. It, it really, really scared me. And I wanted to see my kids grow up and, I, and all this. Yeah, it really hit hard. Diagnoses like Sean's may be more common than once thought. A study cited in Science Magazine found that out of 85 Wuhan patients, roughly a quarter suffered kidney failure. In another study, out of 200 patients, nearly 60% showed signs of kidney damage. And now a theory emerging that the answers could lie not in the organs, but in the bloodstream. Doctors around the globe reporting increased blood clotting. Why is clotting so dangerous? Our heart is pumping blood through our blood vessels to all of our organs. If the blood vessels of those organs are clotted off, the organs don't work. Dr. Human Poor, who teaches at New York's Mount Sinai Hospital, says he first noticed a connection between blood clots and coronavirus after studying autopsy reports. I feel like you're the Sherlock Holmes of this medical detective story. You really began connecting the dots between what was coming out of China and what was being seen in Italy. Patients would have inability to uh, get oxygen out of the air into their blood and carbon dioxide out, but their lungs were not stiff. When we see that type of pattern, what comes to mind is not inflammation in, in the lungs itself, but uh, some kind of problem with the blood vessels of the lungs. A growing number of hospitals already prescribing more potent blood thinners and clot busters for severe COVID-19 patients. But for some, the powerful medications proving dangerous. Something Amanda Klutz has seen firsthand as her husband, Broadway star Nick Cordero, battles against COVID in a Los Angeles hospital. He's been sedated now for 22 days. It was extreme fatigue. No other symptoms. His case seemed a mystery from the onset. He had some chills, but really it was just fatigue, not even body aches. So we were really confused because we would watch the news and, you know, try to be like, could this be? As his condition worsened, Nick was rushed to the ICU. 4 a.m. the next day, he calls and he says, um, honey, they want to put me under. They want to put a ventilator in so that they can help my breathing so my body can rest so that I can kind of heal and not my body is fighting my, itself. 
Weeks later, a devastating blow. Blood thinners to reduce clotting in his leg were causing internal bleeding. Klutz explaining that the doctors were forced to stop that medication and amputate his right leg over the weekend. Hey, everybody. So this afternoon, Amanda taking to Instagram with a hopeful update, saying he's now off blood pressure medicine and that doctors are working slowly to lower ventilator assistance. The doctor just reassured me again that this is the marathon and we are in it to win it and that it is it could be today it could be tomorrow it could be a week it could be months but we just need him to wake up across the country clinical trials are ramping up to investigate the connection between blood clotting and covid but dr poor cautions that it's still just conjecture we don't want to uh, give them a medicine that is dangerous and that leads to you know, a catastrophic bleed, for example, uh, for a patient who otherwise would have gotten better. How optimistic are you that you're onto something? I'm optimistic that we're onto something. Uh, whether this fully translates into um, you know, therapies that definitively will help, uh, only time will tell. In this race against time, the difference between death-defying innovation and life-saving caution can be razor thin. So it's a very precarious balance and we still don't have a perfect answer. How aggressive have you got in using anticoagulants or, or blood thinners? We have gotten very aggressive. All of our patients, when they go on ventilators, are put on a heparin infusion. Dr. Eric Osborne, an ICU lung specialist in Virginia, has found that with COVID-19, aggressive treatments and calculated risks can pay off. It did for his patient, T2 Pamachan. We started him on uh, heparin while he was still on mechanical ventilation, continuous dialysis. You're doing multiple things and it's very difficult to know what worked. You threw everything you had at him. Uh, yes, we did. One month ago, T2's wife Amanda was preparing for the worst as he fought for his life on a ventilator. We didn't think he was coming home. T2 was the first patient at his hospital to be treated with the experimental Ebola drug, remdesivir. A week after arriving, his condition took a dive, leading Dr. Osborne to turn to an even more invasive procedure, a special machine called an ECMO, to lighten the load on his heart and lungs. You suck the blood out of a large vein, it goes through a pump, a centrifugal pump, and then through a membrane lung, and then you return it to another large vein, like dialysis for the lungs. And so this machine basically filters and oxygenates your blood for you. Yeah, it removes carbon dioxide and it, um, it, it infuses oxygen. Dr. Osborne learned how to use the highly specialized machine while at a German hospital during the height of the Iraq war. Now he applies his combat mentality on these battlefields as he navigates gut-wrenching dilemmas about whom to save. There was a 44-year-old at an outside hospital that needed uh, to be to go on ECMO. Um, there was an 82-year-old in a bed, and we were talking with the family, and we said, listen, are you willing to, we're going to move your, your father out of his room and move him into a lower level of care. I said, Dad lived a good life. He would, he would, uh, he would want to do this, um, and it's the right thing to do. So they'd allowed us to uh, put a 44-year-old on ECMO who was quite sick. He's now uh, actually getting ready to, to go home. It's the longest five minutes of waiting I've ever done in my life. <laughs> For T2, those aggressive treatments and outside the box thinking worked. Wow, you look great. <laughs> Earlier this month, reuniting with his family after three long weeks in the hospital. Thank you, doctors and nurses, for saving our dad. Thank you. He's now slowly finding footing in a new reality. So we have to do this. About three times a day. Heart rate 91 beats per minute. Your blood pressure shows mild hypertension. So that's actually better than it's been, believe it or not. Um, we'll take it. There's a lot of blurry memories I have, nightmares of, you know, flashbacks to near-death experiences. Uh, now I'm talking to a therapist in regards to that. <laughs> I want to be here for my kids and my wife. That's 
why I fought probably so hard to be here is that, you know, I need them as much as they need me. One day at a time, getting a little stronger each day. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.